because God is so clear about living in community and in connected community. I mean, it's it's built into the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. There are so many one another verses that remind us that we walk alongside each other, that we help one another, that we give each other what we need, that we build one another up, that we remind each other the truth of the gospel. And so how do we do this? How do we do this? And honestly, for me, I have to ask myself, why don't I? Because I kind of know that I should. And maybe you already knew that there were all these verses and that God values community. And you're like, but how? (laughs) How how do I show up? How do I share my authentic self? Well, I think for me, I had to deal with some ideas and some beliefs that were keeping me from community. So in my new book, Don't Mom Alone, every chapter um, addresses a different isolating idea. And it really starts with me before it even begins with anyone else. And that was these beliefs. Um, I, I really want to be a good mom or dad. I'm sure you want to be a good parent. And I want to raise amazing humans. But I can sometimes believe that it is all up to me and that I have got to get this figured out. And so I isolate because I think it is my full responsibility to turn out amazing humans. And I had to come to grips with the fact that I am important. My children learn about love. They learn about who God is. They know what it feels like to be loved and to connect with God um, through me, through my relationship with them. But I am not essential. I know many people who were not raised by their biological parents or maybe were in and out of foster, foster care homes and they are still serving God and doing the good things that he planned in advance for them to do. And they didn't need their biological parents to do that. So we're not essential, but we are important. I mean, think of Samuel and Moses. They probably only knew their moms for the first five years of their lives and they had encounters with the living God. So we're not important. I mean, we are important, but we're not essential. And I think if we free ourselves from that, that helps us in wanting to be vulnerable with people because we recognize that we don't have to hold this whole responsibility. And when we have other people in our lives, they help us remember that God is filling in the cracks and providing grace. The other thing is I have to recognize there is not a formula for this. Sometimes we can get in these ideas and we have division between moms and parents because we believe there is this certain route to creating adults who are successful. And so we kind of create posses and groups and and argue and judge over other people's choices, whether the mom works outside the home or in the home or whether you choose sports or not sports or cell phones or not, whatever it is. And I think if we can recognize that there is not a formula Also that God sees your intention of wanting to do this well and not your perfection. And that's what this whole conference is about. That he sees your heart, he sees your desire, and that is great. And if we could all recognize that we want to do a good job and support each other in that, instead of bickering over how that's done, I think we would find a lot of commonality and connection. So I personally believe in order to take that risk, that being exposed to possibly being attacked or I think rejected, that fear of rejection, it requires a safe space. And safe for you is gonna be different than safe for me perhaps, but I think in general, I am more willing to share something hard I'm going through if I can guarantee that the person will not be judging me, but they will be listening. Like I said, they are gonna maybe ask what I need and not assume and advise that they're gonna keep my story right where it is instead of sharing it with other people. And so I'm gonna encourage us to be those kinds of friends and let's talk through those. When Bruce and I reached out and started um, and joined a small group after my uh, anxiety attack, that group worked through a 12-step recovery program and I'm a big fan. There are so many different biblically-based 12-step programs and they are not just for addicts. I'll tell you these recovery groups, they have figured out how to create vulnerable, safe community. People are showing up bleeding, broken, and looking for that connection and belonging. And so it was really great to be with a group of people that were willing to dig into 
their feelings and their thoughts and their behaviors and why are they acting this way and to do that in a place where we knew we weren't going to be rejected and so um, in that I learned some ways to listen better I think so many years I'm not a very good listener and one of those ways is to be emotionally present with people instead of just thinking about what you're gonna say next or something you read that you can share with them or a podcast that you could give them really sit as someone's talking to you and feel what they're feeling listen to the power of the Holy Spirit in you that's gonna prompt you and advise you on how to counsel them because if you are with other believers in Jesus you have one spirit and that spirit communicates with itself and it's it's kind of gonna pull you to be what that person needs the comfort that that person needs and so instead of just thinking from your head I'm, I would I would encourage you to lean into the Spirit and the Holy Spirit and really be present with them um, to speak in first person instead of well people or so-and-so says hey I feel um, I think allowing for periods of silence it can be uncomfortable but just sitting there so that y'all can hear from God and not just from what you're thinking. Um, and I think, I think really, <laughs> I th just providing space, it's amazing to me. We would have process groups and people would take turns. And in that time, we would allow someone to share and no one interrupts. The person shares what's going on. And it's amazing if you just let them keep talking without interrupting or providing some other feedback or thoughts how they go deeper and they go deeper. There are very few spaces where we can really just process out loud with people. And so this walking alongside each other and being with one another starts with literally being with people and listening to them. And so if you could provide that space or connect with two or three people, I think that would be fantastic. And if you're wondering, well, who can I ask? I would pray first. God, bring to mind people that I could foster this level of community with, and I promise you that he will. I, I know we always add prayer at the end as like a last ditch effort, but to me, it is the first line of defense, especially when it comes to community. I have prayed with women, and of course God shows up and brings to mind a mentor, a friend, someone that they can connect with and encourage them in the way that he wants to encourage them. Pray for that then test it out. Maybe invite them to coffee or to a park or over to your house and offer up one struggle, one hard thing that you're going through. Maybe not a huge thing, maybe a small thing and see how they respond to it. Do they identify with your feelings? Do they share something themselves? Um, there is a popular show right now, Ted Lasso, and I know it's, it's, not a, it's, a, it's definitely not G-rated, but it was interesting in an episode recently Ted shares about his panic attack. They all thought he had stomach issues during a game and left the game quickly. And he admits to them that no, he is really struggling. And they did not reject him. They did not say, oh my gosh, I can't believe you didn't tell us that. Or what is wrong with you that you can't handle the pressure? Instead, they each shared something and they kind of huddled up. And to me, it was the perfect example of what we desire. This man, I'm really struggling with my child and, um, this teacher situation or oh, I don't know how to connect with my son every time I try to it just came to blow it up even more if people come alongside you if you share that hard thing and the person responds with huh interesting wow this latte is amazing loud and clear that's not your person and that's okay it's not a rejection of you it's just where they are right then and you can keep asking God to Open your eyes to the next person and um, gather up two or three people or two or three couples if you and your husband are looking for this kind of community and bring up these things. Say, hey, we'd love to have a space where we could talk and no one interrupts and we listen and we allow for silence. And uh, the next thing I would encourage you is instead of jumping in and assuming what people need, ask what they need. We do that in our group. And so this is from Townsend and his um, leadership group uh, it's basically four different quadrants of needs the first quadrant is to be heard and that's what we were just talking about just this acceptance attunement validation have you ever shared something and someone's like oh my gosh I totally get that of course you felt that way um, 
Identification, I felt that way too. Containment is it doesn't leave the space. We'll talk about that in a moment. Support, affirmation, encouragement, just your presence can be huge. Um, they might share and you're like, what do you need from me? And it's like, you know what? Your presence through this is so helpful. Celebration, this thing was hard with my kid and now it's not. Let's celebrate together. They may ask for input, clarification on something that they're trying to process through perspective, understanding. It may even be confrontation, which, man, that is not easy to ask to be confronted. Um, I like, I prefer carefrontation, where the heart is loved and connection and for them. Uh, direction. They may need advice, and they'll ask for advice instead of you giving it. Prayer. Of course, we can pray with, our pe with people. And uh, the last is we want what we share to be kept private and within that group and that containment. And so for me personally, this is really hard. And so if I had to create at one point my own little rules of how I would start a new habit of keeping people's information to, um, to them, to them and keeping it private. I'm trying to look for my notes here. I called it the say it to her face challenge. And basically, uh, I, made up some rules for myself. I also had a prayer that I prayed, and if you wanna pray this for yourself, I said, Lord, put a guard over my mouth and watch over the door of my lips. It's Psalm 141.3. Do not allow any unwholesome talk to come out of my mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Ephesians 4.29. Again, it goes back to those needs. Only according to their needs. Um, and then amen. So when I was in a conversation, I, this is not prescriptive, this was my own conviction, but if it helps you, that's great. Um, when I'm in a conversation with someone, I would not talk about anyone unless they were physically present. It was just a good habit for me, a good physical reminder. If someone's name came up, I would be like, oh wait, they're not here, and I would direct it back to who was there. Even if it's a common friend, even if we're saying good things, it's always a slippery slope. Even if we're just stating facts, I tried to keep the conversation back to who I was with. Um, confidence. I would keep people's confidence by not sharing news with someone else. Um, if it's a job or pregnancy or some even happy news, I would allow that person, it's their news to tell. Even if they need prayer, I would only share if that person said that they wanted people to pray for it. Um, and if they ask you a question, hey, how's Sally? Oh, maybe you should call Sally. She would love to hear from you. And then I would point it back to the person who was there because I wanna use my time and my energy to really getting to know who I'm with. And so often we deflect and talk about other people because we don't wanna share the hard part of our lives, because we don't wanna be vulnerable, because we're afraid of thinking others are gonna judge us or think poorly of us. So I will ask them, you know, what is God teaching you lately? What was a highlight or low light this week? What specifically can I pray for you? And again, there are seasons when I'm better at this than others, but if I'm finding myself off track, and usually it's when I'm not in a good place, I start talking about other people. So if that's you too, and you need a little bit of help, that's my little advice, the say it to her face challenge or say it to his face challenge. Um, you wanna be that person who provides safety so people will be vulnerable with you. And oftentimes it starts with us going first. That's us going first. And it is worth taking the risk of rejection for that authentic connection.